What's up guys? Thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me. A lot of crazy stuff has happened in the 3DS as well as the Wii U scene and I want to bring you guys all the latest news. So get ready for... This Week in Homebrew. Five? Right off the bat is a couple of homebrew programs I featured last week, one being a proof of concept called Open Services, which is a replacement for some of the Nintendo 3DS services. Now, as you can see here, it recently got a new name, as it is now known as 3D Feet. Although the project goal still seems to be the same as they want to replicate all of Nintendo services for the 3DS and possibly even the Wii U if an SSL patch is released. So no real updates, just it got a name change. Again, up next is another program I featured last week called GCC Thing, and while it hasn't really gotten an update, it also got a name change, so it is now known as GCIR, or GameCube Controller Input Redirect. If you guys are interested, obviously links will be in the description. Up next is a Twitter post by Mr. MBAO talking about a potential secondary exploit that might exist inside Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire. As you can see here, when I worked on base hacks a year ago, I actually found multiple vulnerabilities. I found out today that maybe another one is exploitable. Now, before you go and get your hopes up, as I said, this is a secondary exploit and it technically hasn't even been exploited yet. And Mr. MBAO says Nintendo won't fix it and I'm not going to release anything. So. What he means by this is the normal base hack still works fine, so he's got no reason to work on exploiting this other vulnerability inside of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. As you can see here by this next post, he says, here it is the new Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire vulnerability that's been documented. So you can head over to 3D Brew, and if we scroll down here, you can see here's a new entry for Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire and it is a PSS data heap stack overflow. So you can read about it here if you want. Originally discovered June 2016, posted about on October 1st, 2017. So for the average end user, this exploit or vulnerability technically since it hasn't been exploited yet, doesn't really serve any purpose and it's not going to get exploited. And even if it did, you'd still need homebrew probably to install it as it would be a secondary entry point. Up next is some good news for anyone that's trying to get custom firmware on their 3DS by using NTR boot hacks and potentially their flash cart was not supported yet. As you can see, version 0.3.0 has been released and a few more DSTT chips have been given support. Now if you remember my previous video about DSTT carts, then only a few of the chipsets inside were supported and some people's carts were not going to work. But as you can see here, Kitling has now made it so that the DSTT chips are more supported. So hopefully your DSTT laying around your room is going to work and get you custom firmware. Another thing to note on this is Demivler updated the DS NTR boot flasher to version 3.1. And if we head over to his GitHub page, you can see it again has the more support for the DSTT cards thanks to Kitling's update and it's also been updated to boot 9 strap 1.3 where it was giving you 1.2 before. If you guys want to know how to use any of these then head over to the links right here. You can see this will take you to the 3ds.guide for using a single system, a guide for using the Nintendo DS or a guide for using the DSi. And while we're still on the topic of getting custom firmware using a flash cart, as you can see here, there has been a release called ARDS Firmware Tool. Now, ARDS Firmware Tool is a basically an action replay DS, easy, slash media edition, slash DSi edition, compatible NTR boot flasher. So basically, if you have one of these action replays, you could potentially use it to get custom firmware on your 3DS. Now there's a few stipulations where a couple of these devices, you can't reflash the firmware onto them unless you have a second device. So after you use it, your action replay might never be able to be used again. There's a decent amount of information here if you want to go ahead and read it and check out the GitHub page. I don't have an action replay, but it does seem like a viable option at the moment if you're interested in trying to get NTR boot going. Up next is a new release from Bernardo Giordano who brought us such programs such as PKSM and it is titled Checkpoint. Now Checkpoint is a fast and simple save manager written for custom firmware slash Rosalina. Now as you can see here, this is a screenshot of it. It is pretty clean looking. 
Now it says why use Checkpoint? It's because Checkpoint is a simplistic and efficient save manager that has a condensed UI that allows you to have a lot of options on one page but keeping the operations simple. Checkpoint supports normal titles and demos. It also automatically checks and filters homebrew titles which may or may not have any save archive to back up or restore. One thing that I do want to note is you can use Checkpoint with both custom firmware and Rosalina based homebrew launchers, but hacks based homebrew launcher entry point is not supported by Checkpoint. So that means if you have strictly homebrew, whether it be RPG hacks or Flipnote hacks or Cubic Ninja, you cannot use Checkpoint. At least at this moment in time, it is strictly for custom firmware users. One of my next videos, I'm hoping to feature Checkpoint and we'll see how it works stacked up against JKSMK and JKSM. You can go ahead and use FBI to scan this QR code if you want to install the CIA or you can go ahead and get the 3DSX version if you want to run it from your Rosalina's homebrew. Well that's about it for 3DS homebrew news, let's get on to the Wii U. First up for the Wii U, we're over on the Wii U Hacks subreddit and you can see a post by Sergio Prado that says unlock Wii Virtual Console Processor from default 729 MHz up to 1.215 GHz. Now what does this mean exactly? As you can see here, Fix94, the dev behind Nintendo, did his magic again. Now you can unlock the Virtual Wii's console processor from 729 up to 1.215. This will help speed up a lot of demanding emulators for the Wii, such as Not64 and Wii SX. Keep those both in the back of your mind as I'm going to mention them again shortly. This coupled with the possibility of playing some Wii emulators with the gamepad controller is amazing. So basically, the Wii Virtual Console injector script has been updated to allow you to patch in this unlocked clock speed. Now what's awesome about this, if we head over to the GBA temp thread for the Wii Virtual Console injector script, you can see it now supports injecting GameCube ISOs, Wii ISOs, and Homebrew. So as I was mentioning earlier, Wii SX or the PlayStation 1 emulator has now been injected using this script so that you can boot PlayStation games from your Wii U menu and it's going to allow you to utilize that new unlocked clock speed to potentially get some better performance out of your PlayStation ISOs. The same thing can be done for Not64 as well as probably some other emulators and since we're using the Wii Virtual Console injector script to do so then you very well will be able to play these emulators using the gamepad as a controller. What this tool does, this tool will take a GameCube game, a Wii game, or a Wii homebrew you've provided and export a fully packaged installer ready to go with Whoop Installer GX2. We've made a lot of progress in just like about a week on this Wii Virtual Console injection and it is absolutely getting out of hand. One other note is you can see there is a link to the App Store here that has a program called Sign C2W Patcher. Now this was created by Fix94 and it basically allows you to unlock the CPU speed of the Wii Virtual Console. So essentially you're going to have to run Homebrew, run Sign C2W Patcher, and then you can go ahead and run something such as your Wii SX Forwarder and get that full CPU speed that you want. Up next is a Mario Kart 8 custom track tutorial that appeared over on GBA Temp. Now this is basically a massive tutorial showing you how you can start creating your own custom tracks for Mario Kart 8. Now I don't know if a lot of people are currently doing this, but hopefully this thread will help more people get into it and we'll have some extremely custom tracks made for Mario Kart 8 soon enough. That would be pretty awesome. It would be cool to see some other tracks ported into this. I think there is even a part of this tutorial that mentions importing other tracks. Here it is, porting tracks. If you guys have any interest in getting this going and figuring out how you can make your own tracks, then go ahead and check out this thread. I guess that's it for this week in Homebrew. Hope you guys enjoyed. Slam that thumbs up. If you want to see me make a video about anything I featured today, make sure you throw that down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Make sure to look out for that checkpoint tutorial as I'm really excited to test it out. Make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Peace.